If India, Japan, US and Taiwan can push for the destruction of China's economic might, how could South Korea be left behind? Samsung, the largest company in South Korea whose revenue alone accounts for around 17% of the country's GDP, had already started to exit from China a few years ago. As of now, the company has only two semiconductor manufacturing facilities in China as the communist country is a major importer of its semiconductors, as compared to a few years ago when it had smartphone manufacturing units and personal computer manufacturing units in many cities of China. Last year, it had shut down the last smartphone manufacturing unit in the communist nation. This week as well, Samsung Electronics halted the operations in its last personal computer manufacturing unit in China. As per the reports, Samsung has shut down its factory as part of its ongoing efforts to enhance efficiency across their global production basis. Chinese people are increasingly worried about the fact that factories are leaving China as most of them would end up being unemployed as export-dependent Chinese economy would collapse due to the exodus of foreign companies. One commentator wrote on WeChat, China's main social media platform, Samsung will not be the last foreign-funded business in China to pack up and leave as China is just a manufacturing base and the main markets are in the US and Europe. If these markets are closing doors to Chinese goods, it's inevitable that multinationals will pull out. China is the largest trading partner of South Korea with a total trade of $284 billion. China's exports to South Korea were $110 billion, while imports were $184 billion. The trade relations between the two countries boomed after the end of the Cold War when both countries left the Cold War frictions to establish formal relations. From the late 1990s to the mid-2010s, the trade volume between the two countries grew exponentially and reached this scale. Relations between the two countries although hit a roadblock in 2016 when China imposed sanctions on South Korea for the installation of Terminal High Altitude Area Defense or the THAAD missiles which increased the American military influence and thus the South Korean influence too in the region. China's opposition to the installation of the missile generated a popular resentment against Beijing, which has been visible in Korean pop culture in the last few years. Seoul was worried about China's rise and its assertiveness. Chung Park, who heads Korea chair of Brookings Institution, wrote, those fears became a reality when Beijing, emboldened by its growing economic, diplomatic and military weight, took a more confrontational approach and sought to exert its strength towards punishing South Korea when it decided to deploy the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense American Anti-Ballistic Missile Defense System after North Korea's fourth nuclear test in January 2016. It can be said that South Korea's stance towards China hardened due to Donald Trump too, given the fact that America guarantees security to South Korea and practically controls its foreign policy, the hawkish stance of Trump against China is getting reflected in South Korean policy. Recently, Trump had invited South Korea to join the expanded version of G7 countries and the government in Seoul had to accept that despite initial reluctance. Now, South Korean companies are leaving China as they fear American sanctions. The threat of the US-China trade war too looms large on the countries that are traditional allies of the United States as they risk losing business in the American market if they continue to deal with China.